We're talking about spiritual warfare and we are looking at it purely from the basis of the word. Uh, because we talked about last week how this subject has been taught and preached about a lot. And um, there's some stuff that has been added and taken away and things like that that has made it kind of spooky and people are scared and and all that. So we are going at it, we're cutting away everything and we're going at it directly from the word. Amen? Amen. 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 So, uh, spiritual warfare. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a recap of last week. And um, Jesus, from last week, right? And last week, one of the things we, we, we recognized, we saw that Jesus' victory was complete and eternal. Jesus' victory over the enemy, over Satan and the kingdom of darkness, was complete and eternal. Did he leave anything else out? No, no. Was anything left undone? No. Okay. And he won the victory for us. He won the victory for who? Us. He won the victory for you? Yes. He won the victory for me? How many people here did he, did Jesus win the victory for? Okay, everybody put their hand up. Fantastic, good. And I want you to make note of these scriptures um, right here. These scriptures right here, because those are the ones that we studied in depth last week. If you didn't take them down, I want you to take those addresses down today. Um, I encourage you to take them down today. That's Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Ephesians 2, 6. We're not going to go through it today because we went through it at length last week and we won't finish this if we go through it again because I get hung up on it. I tell you, I, every time I read these scriptures, I've been reading them all week, I am excited. Ephesians 1, 19 to 23. Ephesians 2, 6. Colossians 2, 14 to 15. And Matthew 28 and verse 18, and Luke 10 and verse 19. I am even tempted now to read them, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be very strong. Um, I've been, we, we looked at them last week from the New Living Translation. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing. If you can get those scriptures, put them on your iPad or on your phone, but put them in sequence and then just read the whole thing. Read them all, let Ephesians 1, 19 to 23 bleed into Ephesians 2, 6, bleed into Colossians 2, 14 and 15, bleed into Matthew 28, 18, bleed into Luke 10, 19. You read it all from top to bottom, which we did last week together. I don't know how many people remember that. We read those one into the next, into the next, into the next last week. Shall I read it? Shall I read it? No. Okay, Michelle, don't. Hold it. Hold it. So we read those from the New Living Translation last week. But um, those are scriptures to corroborate and show us in the word that Jesus' victory over the enemy was complete and what? And that he won the victory for? Okay, now there are two foundational scriptures, two foundational scriptures that we are homing in on through this study of spiritual warfare. Two foundational scriptures. One is from Ephesians and one from Colossians. No, from, one from 2 Corinthians. And I have an assistant that's going to come and read those scriptures for us today. Okay. Two foundational scriptures in the Bible on the subject of spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers of the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor, armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will... Stand, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground. 
putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows, arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask, ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly expa explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I am in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-6, Amplified. For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every assaulted and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ, being ready to punish every act of disobedience when your own obedience as a church is complete. So those are our two foundational scriptures that we're using to study uh, uh, spiritual warfare. And our first point in recap, just to remind us, Jesus' victory was complete and eternal, and he won the victory for us. Let's go to the next point two of the recap. Warfare is a part of everyone's life. So we're all involved in spiritual warfare, whether we feel like it or not, whether we feel we're up to it or not, whether we believe it or not, you don't believe it, whether we believe it or not. Every single person, especially if you're a born-again believer, Jesus Christ, he's, he's, we are a son, son and a daughter of God, you are definitely involved in it. We're a part of the action, and it's going on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 years, days a year, 366 days when it's a leap year, it's constant. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. And we must be strong. We must be strong. We must be strong in our hearts. We must be strong in our hearts. But how are we going to be strong? In the Lord. We have to be strong in the Lord. And how are we strong in the Lord? We talked about it last week. By staying in the? In the word. Jesus said, abide in my word and I will abide in you. So we must be strong in the Lord and also greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we looked at who is in the world. We thought, well, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Who's in the world? We established that it is the enemy. The enemy. Satan, he's in the world. He, he rules uh, uh, the hearts of men in the world. He rules the world system. The system of the world as it is today, he, he rules that. He controls the atmosphere and, 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 and the um, 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 seasons of, of, of things that are happening and stuff like that. He rules that. And so, but we learn that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, okay? So that's very important to recognize that at every point in your life. Let's move to the next, the, the next slide. We must put on the full armor of God so that we can successfully take our stand against the devil's scheme. We just read that. Mika just read that in um, Ephesians um, about putting on the whole armor of God. And we read it at length last week. Um, so we must put on, the word says to put on, put on the whole armor of God um, so that we can successfully take our stand against the devil's schemes. And how many people here want to successfully take their stand? Amen. Anybody want to be unsuccessful taking their stand? No. Okay. So we put on the full armor of God and we're going to go into the full armor at length, but not today. Uh, that will be next week. So we must put on the full armor of God so that we can successfully take our stand against 
this devil's scheme. So that tells me we can successfully take our stand. It's not like, well, I don't know. You know, we can successfully take our stand. Let's move on to the next point. Right. Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against spirit forces of wickedness which rule the present darkness in the world. And uh, that's part of our foundational scripture that Mika just read. Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood. This is flesh and blood here, right? But against the spirit forces of wickedness which rule the present darkness in the world. And I, you know, I was checking out, studying that, and I was looking at the word wrestle, wrestling. And you know, wrestling, I'm going to read it from my notes here because I Quite frankly, I can't say it off by heart. Wrestling is a, it's a contest between two. I'm just going to look. This is just a definition of wrestling, okay? Wrestling is a, con- a contest between two in which each endeavors to throw the other, throw them, and which is decided when the victor is able to hold his opponent down with his hand upon his neck. Have you ever seen wrestling before? How many people seen wrestling, right? With wrestling, it's, it's not, wrestling is not so much punching and kicking, but it's kind of getting your, 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 the opponent in a chokehold. You're trying to, you're trying to, you have to control them. You pin them down, right? That's what with wrestling, you have to pin them down. And when you get to pin them down so that they can't function, they can't move, then they win, right? And so we know that the enemy is constantly trying to pin us down. Everything that's coming against your life, every, every situation that's coming, is all he's trying to do, he's trying to get to pin you down. That's the, that's the, that, that is it. That's what pin you down so that you can't move, you can't function, you can't live right, you can't. That's, that, that's his aim. That's his aim. But we, we've learned here that our, res, our wrestling is not against flesh and blood. We're not really fighting against people. Although, of course, the enemy will use people. He uses people. I'm going to say that again. He uses people. All right. So what we see is flesh and blood, but there's something behind it. And that's what we have to recognize. There's there's stuff behind it. And, um, And those are spirit forces of wickedness, which rule the present darkness um, that's in, in the world. Um, Webster's um, d- definition of wrestle, the Webster's dictionary, it says to fight by holding and pushing. And we, we just established that. Um, it means um, st- to struggle, to keep somebody f- so that they, could, they struggle to move, to deal or to control, control something. And ah, uh, ah, uh, listen. I've got somewhere to go with this. That's why I'm, I'm excited at this point, because I've got somewhere to go with this. But um, sometimes he tries to do it literally. Has anybody ever been pinned down? Yeah. And you, there's nobody in the room. But you've been pinned down. Okay. There's somewhere I'm going with that. That's why I wanted to make that point. Um, Let's go to six. Let's go to to the the, the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. The character of our enemy. So we've already learned that wrestling and the enemy's aim is to pin you down, right? Control you, pin you down so that you can't move. And we're going to look briefly, very briefly, at the character of our enemy. So let's go to John 10. And and by the way, does anybody know who the enemy is? I'm, I'm sorry, just in case, because... Who's the enemy? The devil. devil. Satan. Yes. Right. Those are all names for him. Satan. Devil. Satan means adversary. It also means deceiver. Another name for him is the accuser of the brethren who will bring accusation against you. And in, in Jesus refers to the enemy as a thief here. And in John chapter 10 and verse 10, this is Jesus speaking, he says, he says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I came, Jesus is saying, I came that they, us, may have 
and enjoy life and have it in abundance, have what in abundance? Life, to the full till it overflows. So Jesus is saying, hear what? Listen, listen, listen. The thief, the one who comes, who's coming to put you down, he comes only, everybody say only. Only, only in order to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I came that they would have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. The thief only, the thief comes only. Um, as Robin was sharing a couple of weeks ago, he said, listen, the devil is bad, okay? He only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Every time. He doesn't play fair. He doesn't play by the rules. He doesn't fight by the rules. Every kind of underhanded, nasty, disgusting way he can come, he's, he can come. Okay? There is, he, he's, not, he's, not, he's not fair. You know, people say, oh, that's not fair. He's not fair. So just acknowledge that. Right. And every time, every time he comes, it's always in order to steal to kill and to destroy in areas of your life. We look at areas of our lives and anywhere where there is stealing, where there is killing, killing, killing of, of your life, killing of purpose, killing of dreams, killing of relationships, stuff like that. Destruction, it's always him. And under all these headings, all of stealing, killing, destroying, um, all the, under all those headings come, there are some subheadings, but they're all included in those, and things like accusation, uh, um, destruction, uh, manipulation, manipulation. Um, you know, like n manipulate you emotionally. Have you ever had somebody try to manipulate you? And it's not so much they're using their physical hands to force you, but uh, it's a kind of a manipulate your emotions. You know, if they make you feel, they know if they make you feel a certain way, then they, then, then they will control you to do what? Yeah, that, that's, that's a characteristic of the enemy. Um, control, to control somebody. God does not control us. He doesn't, even now, listen, even now, we are believers in Christ. We are believer. we believe God, we love God, we love his word, and yet we are his children. He will not control us. He will not control us. We get to make decisions. That's one of the wonderful things about being a human being. God said, I create, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And he gave us free will so that we can decide. Do you understand? Yes. And even if we're going to do something wrong, God will not stop you. If you make the decision to do something, he will... I gave him free will. I, I. He's a gentleman. And he loves us so much, he's given us free will. Holy Spirit is such a gentleman. He will not force himself. That's why even when we meet together, we invite him. We say, Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. Lord, we invite you to take control of this meeting because you know, he won't do it unless we invite him. Not so the enemy. The enemy controls people. He likes to control, domineer, yes. manipulate. Those are his characteristics. That's what he does. Intimidate. That's the last one. Intimidate people. You know, bully. Bully intimidates. Rah! Tries to make you feel like he's bigger. 
than he really is. Bring circumstances and situations that seem like a wall, a mountain. And it's him behind it. And it's smoke and mirrors. Yes, correct. Yes. And people who have his nature try to intimidate others. And it's his nature. It's his nature. So where, where you see these things, intimidation, control, domineering, uh, manipulation, destruction, killing, hatred, stealing, accusation, all these things are his nature. Pride, fear, all these things are his nature. Let's go to the next slide. Why did we go through that? We went through that and we said that, and I just skimmed over it because we don't want to give him too much attention, but skimmed over it. But you understand, right, those characteristics? Everybody understand those characteristics? Okay. It's because we, it's important that we know we can recognize the characteristics. Now, Sun, what was it? Sun Tzu, he was a Chinese, Chinese um, general. And he, he had this book that he wrote concerning war and the act of war. And I found this particular quote, and it's called The Art of War. Sun Tzu, he wrote a book and it's called The Art of War. And I found this particular quote very applicable to us. It, he said, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles, right? If you know yourself, but you don't know the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. Yes. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So that's why we went through some of the characteristics, the main characteristics of the enemy, so we would know him, so we can recognize his tactics in situations and circumstances. And he, you know very well that he cloaks himself. He doesn't come with a, a red bodysuit with a pitchfork and horns and a long tail, right? Because you see, you, you see him coming miles away, right? So he doesn't come like that. No, he's cloaked. He's cloaked. So if you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. But if you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. And our aim is to not fear in the result of a hundred battles. Amen? Yes. Let's go to the next slide. The enemy also operates strategically. He operates very strategically. He knows human, human patterns of thought. Um, I put here, he didn't know it was going to work. Let, let's say, even with Adam and Eve, with Adam and Eve, that's back in the beginning, and his strategy concerning Eve, and also to get to Eve, to get to Adam, he didn't know that was going to work. Right? They were the first two human beings, but it worked. And so because it worked, he stuck with that strategy. And it has worked and continued to work with the human race. Did God say, can you believe him? He's holding out on you. Oh, he just doesn't want you to have that because he knows when you have that, you'll be like him. Your life's going to be improved. You're going to feel better. You're going to enjoy it. It's for your better, but he's just holding out on you. It works every time, except for the sons and daughters of God, because we get to recognize him. Amen? So at that time, he didn't know it was going to work, but he worked it, and it worked. And so he stuck with that, with that strategy. Um, he knows human patterns of thought. So since Adam and Eve, through the ages of time, we're now in the year 2018, he has had all that time since Adam and Eve to study human behavior, human patterns of thought, 
sons and daughters of God, people, sorry, people who are not yet sons and daughters of God and people who are sons and daughters of God if they don't recognize his tactics, how they're going to respond to a certain situation and circumstance. He even knows us as individuals, how we have responded to situations and circumstances from the time we were born up to the time we were born again. He knows how the unrenewed mind is going to think. And he works that. That's his strategy. He's not omniscient. He doesn't, he doesn't actually fully know what you're going to do, but he thinks he knows what you're going to do. Do you understand? He's not omniscient. He's not like God. God knows everything at all times. Every, like he, we're here. God knows what each of us here, whether each of us is here. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what we're doing. He knows our frame of mind. And he knows that for every single person on the planet at this minute, all at the same time, intimately and in detail. That's God. The enemy? No. He doesn't know everything, but he knows patterns. You understand? Okay, he, he, he knows patterns. So he's learned through the ages. Let's go to the next slide. A major part of how we engage in this warfare is, number one, let's read it together, being aware of the fact that we are involved and knowing who we are. Amen? Amen. So let's go to the next slide. Who are we? We are born of God. In 1 Peter 1 and 23, 1 Peter 1 verse 23, um, that scripture talks about how we are born again by the word of God, by the incorruptible seed of God, not by human mortal seed or sperm, but by the sperm or the seed of the word of God. That's how come we are we are born of God. Everybody say with me, we're born of God. Let's go to the second part. We belong to God. We belong to God. First John 4, 4 says that we belong to God. It says, brethren, you belong to God. And then it goes on to say, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So we belong to God. So one, we are born of God. Two, we belong to God. And the last point, we are victorious. Somebody say it with me. We are victorious. We are victorious. Let's go to the next slide. We are victorious. The scripture for that one is 1 John 5. And in the Passion Translation, it says, For everyone born of God is victorious. For everyone born of God is victorious. And does what? overcomes the world and this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world our continuing persistent faith in Jesus the son of God isn't that good isn't that good amen amen so put that scripture down first John 5 4 to 5 and check it out if you can in the passion translation that's what this has come from that's what this has come from Okay, let's go to the next point. This is the last, last point. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy 6, it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confess the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Fight, I'm going to read it again. Let's read it together. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of the eternal life to which you were summoned and for which you confessed the good confession of faith before many witnesses. Do we have another slide there? Okay, I'm going to read it from Philip's translation. It says, same scripture, 1 Timothy 6 and verse 12. It says, fight the worthwhile battle of the faith. Keep your grip on that life eternal to which you have been called and to which you boldly professed your loyalty before many 
witnesses, fight the good fight of faith. Let's go to the profession bef before many witnesses. Many of us, when we received when we received Christ, many of us may have done it, we've been by ourselves, many of us may have um, been in a church service and, and they called for those who want to receive Christ and you came forward and you received Christ, yes? Yes. Right? And uh, as I said, some people, they were on their own and they just, they just received Christ and there was nobody around. But when we were baptized, there were witnesses, when we were baptized, we professed before witnesses because when they're going to baptize you, they always say, what's your name? And you say your name, Michelle Ramtran, and say, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? He died on the cross for your sins and he, went, he, he rose again on the third day? And you say, yes. And there were witnesses watching. Right, so you boldly professed your loyalty before? Many witnesses. Now, fight the good fight of faith. What is that? Many people think fighting the good fight of faith is fight, fighting devils. Fighting devils, you know. Rebuking and binding and loosing. And some people are loosing while some people are binding. And some people are binding and then others are loosing. And it's like, what is happening? We don't know. Now, there is a place for that. I'm not making fun of it. But it's just, actually, sometimes it's funny when some people are, are binding but some people are loosing, and you're not too sure. Are they binding or they're loosing? Are they loosing? Right. Anyway, however, we'll, but we'll come to that. Uh, but the good fight of faith is this. We just went through three scriptures. We are born of God. I am born of God, so I'm his child. I belong to God. I don't belong to the system of the world. Amen? Right. What was the last one? Yes. We are victorious. Because of what Jesus has done, we are victorious. Okay, so let's say, it just in those three points, the good fight of faith is holding your ground when everything around you is telling you that those three things are not true. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. So... A, good, a great example of fighting good fight of faith is Jesus. When he went to the wilderness after his baptism, and the enemy brought uh, thoughts. He said, um, Jesus, when he came out of the water, there was a sound, there was a, word, there was a voice from heaven. It was the voice of the Father saying, This is my son. I don't know if it sounded like that, but anyway. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus goes into the wilderness. The enemy says, if you are the son of God. Right? God just said, this is my son. Okay, same thing with us. We have just acknowledged that we are children of God. The enemy will come and say, oh, look at you. I don't think, you don't think you're a son or a daughter of God. Look at your behavior. Look at how you, look how you fell short. Look at that, 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 Huh? Right? And it's all to make you, oh, well, maybe I'm not. Perhaps I'm not. Perhaps I'm not saved. Perhaps I don't really believe. Perhaps, fighting the good fight of faith is when you hear that, oh, well, you're not, you're not a child of God. Surely you're not. Your life's not perfect. No, 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 no. <laughs> the fighting the good fight of faith, when you hear that, you say, thank you, God. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you that my righteousness is not by my works, but it is the pure, genuine righteousness that comes by faith in what you did for me, Jesus. I am covered by your blood. You said in your word that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and that's who I am. Oh, and I thank you for it. I thank you that you're growing me in the things of God. I thank you that I'm a new person. Do you see? That's the good fight of faith. Fight the word. Yeah? Amen. Amen. So that's what the good fight of faith is. It's holding your ground. What Jesus purchased for us, holding that ground. Amen? 
Amen, amen. I'm going to give one example, and I've gone five minutes over what I said I was going to do half an hour, but I'm going to give you another example because I've got to. Are you okay with me doing that? Okay. I'm going to read my notes here. It says, keep your eyes, I wrote this, keep your eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the one who initiated our faith, and he's the one that was going to bring it to perfection. All right, not ourselves, but he's doing it, us in cooperate, cooperation with him. And the enemy's ploy is to get you to look away from Jesus and look at him. Anytime he can get you to look away from Jesus and look at him, he's happy. Um, he wants you to give him he, your, he, want, he wants you to give him your attention. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's something that happened to me a few years ago, well, and it's only recently that I, I finally understood. And all the time I'm saying, Lord, Lord, show me what this is because I don't understand what this was. One time I was, um, I was taking a nap. It was the middle of the day. How many people have ever taken a nap in the middle of the day? Is it just me, right? Yep. I was taking a nap in the middle of the day, so I'm, I, I was on the bed. I wasn't, it wasn't on the couch or in a living room. I was on the bed. And, um, okay, so I'm taking the nap in the middle of the day. And then um, I'm almost to, I'm in the process of waking up. I can see the room around me. I know this may be familiar to many of you. You've had this. I can see the room around me but I can't get up. I cannot get off the bed. I can't, I can't even actually move. I can't even move my pinky finger. I cannot move. And not only can I not move, there's a pressure on me. Weight. Weight is on me and weight is in the room. I can, there's, it's in the room, man. And I can't move. Anyway, so this is what this is what happened. So I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to get the word Jesus out of my mouth. I'm trying to get the word, trying to get the name. I'm trying to get <clears throat> trying to get it out. I'm trying to get it out. And I get a certain part of it. <sighs> trying to get it out. I get it out very s softly. Now, this has happened to me before, right? Where I got it out very softly and it lifted, right? But this time, I got it out very softly. Nothing happened. Again, trying to force the word, the name, it's the name trying to get the name Jesus out, it comes out very softly, nothing happens. I am perplexed now because I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Third time, try again. And it, this feels like it's going on for ages, right? I get, I, I get it out, I get Jesus, Jesus. Nothing happens. And I'm looking in the room because my, I can see, but I can't do anything else. And I'm looking in the room and I'm looking at where the area where, where I know that this entity is. I know it where it is. I can't see a physical form, but I know where it is. I'm looking at it and I'm saying, Jesus, what's going on here? What kind of stuff going on in my heart? Then... I started to, I felt it in my spirit, that's why I did, I started to praise. Somehow in my spirit, I started to praise. I started to say, in my spirit, in my spirit, because I can't get the words out right away. So in my spirit, like, Jesus, you're wonderful. 
Jesus, you're fantastic. Jesus, you are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. God, I love you. There is none like you. You are wonderful. There, right? You are my refuge. You are my fortress. And as I start to say in my spirit, and I, it gets louder in my spirit, to the point where it got so loud in my spirit that it came out of my mouth. And as it came out of my mouth, and I start and I continue to praise, but audibly, I was released. The room was clear. That stayed with me for years, all these years. I was like, Lord, what is that? What is that? Does not, that doesn't go according to the textbook. That's not what, that's not what I, and my experience before this, that wasn't it. And it's only recently the Lord revealed to me. He said, listen. All the time you're trying to say my name, but you were looking, you've been, your eyes were on that thing. He says, you got to, he wants your attention. You take your eyes off him and put your eyes on me. You take your eyes off him. You say my name, but you're looking at him. You take your eyes off him. You put you turn your attention to me. Look away from him. And you start to praise me. Now, so I learned that, oh boy. The word says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Most places, if I ask that question, what does that, what does that scripture say? They will go straight to resist the devil and he will flee from you. And not remember, submit to God. Let me tell you, when we submit to God, we are automatically resisting the devil. When we submit to the word and we declare what the word says and we declare it in faith, automatically we're resisting the devil. We're doing it at the same time. We have to know who we are, that we're involved, and who we are in order to experience the victory. Amen? Amen. Uh, Jesus purchased our freedom with his blood. Do you remember, have you ever played a game as a child, the ignore game? Have you had like a group of children, like say you might have four children, and three of them get aside and they say, let's ignore Mary. And Mary's saying, hey guys, and all the rest are going. <whistles> and you say, can't you see me? Why don't we play this game? And the other three are looking away or pretending like they don't hear them. Anybody ever play that game? You don't know that game? You don't know the ignore game? When you ignore somebody? Oh my goodness. And you do it on purpose. That's what we're supposed to do with that guy. Ignore him. The more attention we give him, the more the happier he is. Play the ignore, ignore him game. Amen. So, can we just stand for a minute? And let's say, Jesus, Jesus. I know who you are. I know who I am. am. And I know that we win. win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) 